Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is December 16th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery and you can see the frontal system just now passing the Bay Area. Brought some heavy rain across some of the Sacramento Valley, some of the coastal areas and spring some snowfall to the higher terrain. Brought some to the Cascades, Klamath Range and it's moving down across the Sierra Nevada. As we speak, let's scroll back a little bit there and you can see this when it made landfall there. Uh, this was last night. That was about uh, about four eight p.m. last night and then you can see it moving across the region there's about midnight right there and then we scroll on in here and you can see some of the heavy rain moving across some of the sacramento valley what is that about pretty close to 4 a.m. so that probably woke some people up with that rain smacking on the roof and some of the windows out there and then you see some of the heavy rain just north of the bay area again across some of the sacramento valley and then it swooped across the bay area probably about some heavy rain at times as well and that's where we are right now so we'll take a look at what is to come next we've got some offshore winds we have to deal with and then we'll take a look at the extended forecast as always now these are all the reports here over the last uh, few days here and you can see the tornado report we had multiple flooding issues out there we had some downed trees and look at all the wind reports, basically all the way from South Southern California all the way up across Northern California a lot, across the higher terrain as well. In effect, let's see what this one is. Blowing dust, looks like reduced the visibility out there, gusting 45. So just kind of interesting to see those storm reports out there. And also, if you're wondering about that tornado, it was an EF1, 90 mile per hour peak winds, about 30 yards wide here. Uh, yeah, max width. And you can see that that occurred right about 1.39 p.m., lasted for about five minutes and came right there near a Scotts Valley, California. Now, taking a look at what is going on now, this is from now until about tomorrow morning, 4 a.m. We do have the winter weather advisories. You can see above 5,000 feet, six, uh, two to six inches above 5,000 feet for the southern Sierra Nevada. Shasta County Mountains, five to 12 above 3,000 feet. And this will be tapering off as we move through the day today. As you saw that frontal system draping down to the south and east, some wind gusts to 40 miles per hour, and of course, some higher amounts across the higher terrain. And some of the snow forecast here, again, just a few inches, not a huge snowmaker there for a lot of the uh, Sierra Nevada, but uh, this is Sacramento National Weather Service. And again, you can see the winter weather advisory there. Uh, now, taking a look at Los Angeles. So this is the moderate offshore winds coming Tuesday night. That's uh, tomorrow night and through Thursday. And they do have some fire weather watches out there already and so we'll take a look at some of these wind speeds here in a moment and, the, and a little bit more on the timing on that but you can see san diego uh, they do mention the peak wind gusts are going to be higher you can see north of the los angeles metro but still some gusty winds through some of the gap areas here as we go again through tuesday night on into thursday now taking a look at where we are right about now actually let me back that up a little bit here this is uh, close to where we are right about now and you can see that frontal system moving across the area it's losing its punch though as it moves south and again that precipitation will be wrapping up for the day today and through the next 60 hours maybe a little bit more across northwest california but drying out elsewhere as the offshore winds definitely take hold over the area and if we take a look at the 80 meter wind speeds you'll see we're still on shore here but then we start to switch things up as we go through about what what is the timing on this looks like very early tuesday morning things start to turn offshore and you can see even across some of the bay area they briefly turn out of the north and kind of maybe northeast and north winds coming down the sacramento Valley. but the strongest winds across some of the central coast the higher terrain and of course the santa Ana winds the prone areas there and it does show some pretty gusty winds all the way down across baja here so i don't want to say that there won't be some gusty winds down across you know some of san diego County off to the higher terrain to the east and some of the desert areas some pretty gusty winds out of the northeast and the north uh, yeah and that includes some portions of Nevada and Arizona as well you can see that northeasterly direction across portions of Arizona as we go through the 60 hour period still offshore but weakening as we go through the day on Wednesday now, if we look at 925 millibar heights, so if I put this into motion, this can give you a better idea of when these winds turn offshore. And since this is about 2,500 feet up in the atmosphere, it just kind of gives you a little better view of things. But you can see kind of that northeast component, even across some of the Bay Area, Central Coast, and down across Southern California. And that starts to weaken as we go through Wednesday night and on into Thursday. Still a little bit offshore there as we go through Thursday, but they should be weakening before another frontal system goes through the Pacific Northwest. And take a look at mean sea level pressure. Why is this happening? Well, as we scroll on in towards a Tuesday afternoon, you can see the high pressure kind of building across the Great Basin. That's what helps drives the, drive these offshore winds. 
Taking a look here at maximum wind gusts. So 10 meters, that's 33 feet off the surface. That's where official weather observations measure uh, the peak wind gusts and any wind speed actually. It's supposed to be 33 feet off the ground for an official observation. But you can see some of these gusts getting up over 50. There are probably going to be some local areas where they're guessing uh, 60, maybe even some higher, closer to the gaps and some of the higher terrain as well. And yeah, you can see some of those peak wind gusts here. Not an excessively strong event here, but you know, the low relative humidities and some of these strong winds, you know, the fire conditions can get uh, pretty extreme uh, fairly rapidly. We'll see if they put out red flag warnings at some point during the day today. Now, wider view of things here, Hawaiian Islands bottom left. There's the state of California. There's the frontal system coming through as we speak today. We build that ridge. We get the offshore winds for a few days. And what is next to come? Uh, some of the models are showing, and the European and the GFS, showing a fairly robust system. It's starting to move in here. Again, Central California and Northern California. Not much for Southern California. Again, with that round there, that frontal system swings through in the weekend. And then we get additional storm system development here. This would be a particularly potent storm although that is a ways out there 186 hours that would be the following week so this is almost a week out right now but we're going to see how that trends here over the next few days and that may bring some precipitation to southern california but it wouldn't be too much and then potentially additional frontal systems again affecting made the bay area northbound as we go through the extended forecast we're waiting for that flip to that switch to flip because you know when it does come, it'll come fast and furious and hot and heavy for Southern California. That seems to be the problem. You wish you could spread it out a bit more there. But yeah, we'll just continue to watch the extended forecast and see when that is likely to change. And what would that look like? So there's the frontal system moving through today. Offshore winds, some high pressure. And then we start to get a bit of a pattern change as we go through this weekend. There is that initial frontal system there on Saturday. Then the more powerful storm looks like it would be arriving next week. Look at that 989 millibar low with the power pack pressure gradient to the south that would be a damaging storm if that were to come to fruition but again that's a fantasy forecast right now we're just going to see how that trends in the upcoming days if we scroll out farther, you can see additional frontal systems, again, mainly central and northern California. Not a big rainmaker here for Southern California showing up in the next two weeks. But that can change, and we will be revisiting that on a daily basis. Now, there's the frontal system today on the European. The, the other one I just showed you was the GFS, the American model. Let's see what the European shows. As we go on and towards this weekend, does it have that robust frontal system? Here we go Friday. There we go Saturday morning. Yes, it does. That is a pretty strong pressure gradient all the way uh, down across northwest California towards the Bay Area. That frontal system moves through. Does it show that next strong system? It shows it a bit further north here, more up and towards the Pacific Northwest, but the trailing edge would bring a decent frontal system across the region there. So anyway, that's just looking out into fantasy land. You can see these additional monster storms moving up towards the Pacific Northwest as we go through the month of December. When will Southern California get its turn? We continue to wait. Now, taking a look at about uh, 39,000 feet up in the atmosphere, there's Hawaii bottom center, there's Alaska, California is to the right, Japan is to the left. So we're looking at that jet stream here, and you can see it is extended off to the northwest of, of Hawaii there. And, you know, it doesn't take much. Once you see it start to creep across Pacific, that can start to introduce some stronger storms towards the state of California. And we watch this jet extension showing up at times as we go through the upcoming week. So, you know, all it takes is a little bit of shift in that. And if for things to line up right, maybe we'll start to bring some of these stronger storms down into the state of California. We'll have to watch that carefully. And then you can see as you go to 200 plus hours out, look at that jet extension racing across Pacific there, a strong jet stream pointed somewhere at the West Coast of North America. And that's really all you can take from this at this time frame you're looking over 200 hours out you're over 10 days out at that point so you're just kind of looking at the potential for a more active period as we go on in towards the end of december now if we take a look at the artificial intelligence over the next two weeks we can scroll through this fairly quickly you can see the multiple rounds of systems going through here in big amounts across northwest california southwest oregon and you know very sparse amounts across southwest california so again kind of a reoccurring theme it looks like here over the next couple weeks but again we'll be watching daily and for those of you guys who want to know where it will be a white Christmas, this is Christmas morning here. The European snow depth in inches. You can see this is going to be, uh, you know, across the higher terrain here. We're not looking at any lower elevation snowfall, of course, but just kind of an interesting uh, thing there and kind of give you a heads up that we are starting to move into the time frame here where extended models can see uh, the Christmas time period. Here's the GFS, same map here as well. So some areas across the higher terrain will have a white Christmas. Not unusual at all, you know, higher terrain and steering out in the Cascades and climate range get plenty of snowfall during the winter months. Uh, drought monitor I showed this yesterday. 
uh, relatively speaking, compared to a couple years, two, three years ago, this is much better than what we have been dealing with. Abnormally dry for some areas, but you know we had some extreme and exceptional drought kind of dominating portions of California. You see the extreme drought out here as well, but again, you know this is kind of a typical thing here for the Southwest USA. You're rarely going to be drought free. Drought is a natural occurrence across the region and really across the entire planet. Some places are always going to be in drought. You're never going to have a time when you're just looking at no drought across <laughs> widespread areas or even just abnormally dry. There's always going to be some drought present out there, so it's nothing to panic about. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'll get this video out now. We'll continue to watch this day by day. The offshore winds will be starting on the day tomorrow. The frontal system moving through now. Be careful with the wet roadways and some snow still flying across the higher train. But otherwise, um, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hope you're having a good day and I will see you then.